Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Hey, it's your girl, Miss Honey, here with a Real Housewives of Potomac Season 5 Reunion Part 1 review. You guys, honestly, if they had to do all three parts tonight, I would have sat and watched all three parts. Like, even if they were 90 minutes each, I would have watched all three parts. Like, it was juicy. Juicy, juicy, juicy. It was like shade, shade, drag, drag, shade, shade, drag. Shade, shade, drag, drag, shade, shade, drag. Ooh-wee. But Monique said, y'all go ahead, back and forth, back and forth. But when I speak... Mm hmm I'm gonna speak in receipts and receipts only darling okay it was so good okay so let's just go ahead and talk about one the setup um they had set up uh for the background the marketplace that was in Portugal you know the fruit market so it's full of color and you know big bountiful mounds of fruit and uh peppers and you know it was giving us that market feel that international market feel which i wasn't mad at but i don't know per se if the dresses the theme and the dresses went together like you wouldn't go to a marketplace dress like that like but okay i get what y'all was trying to do there um you know, it was just weird. It was just weird how it was set up in the plants. Like, even the centerpiece and stuff was weird. The center of the room, the table. Like, it it wasn't it wasn't cohesive in my opinion. It beautiful, but it wasn't cohesive. Okay, so let's talk about the ladies um seating. All right, so on each side of Andy was uh on one side was the grand dame karen huger and on the other side was giselle bryant then next to karen was i believe robin which was odd because robin didn't really have no storyline robin really is more like a um she's like a champagne glass holder i mean she's you know a member of the cast but she really don't never really have much you know going on for her to be second chair robin should always be third fourth chair always just because she's she's you know a dude right across from her on the other side next to giselle was uh candace okay and next to candace was wendy well next to robin was uh ashley and then last on the couch was monique now they sat monique last on the couch huh oh yeah she should have been in robin's seat technically technically she should have been in robin's seat but that's fine they said her last on the couch, but the Bible says, huh, that the first shall be last and the last, uh-huh, shall be first. And she was not going to be last. Monique brought her binder and she said, what y'all will not do, y'all will not get up in here and tear my character apart. Tear me all asunder, huh? Put me down to the lowest common denominator, okay, because I had a human moment. Mm-mm. Um, uh -uh, that's not going to happen. If anything, we going to be drugged. Okay. <laughs> Our character will be assassinated. Oh, no. It ain't going to be a Monique, Monique thing. It's going to be a us and we and our and they thing. That's what it's going to be. You drag me? Okay. The binder says, now, darling, I must drag you. Okay. Uh, Outfits wise. Okay, my best dress is going to have to be Monique, that bob. Look at your bob. You wearing that bob, girl. Woo. Baby, that bob say you don't want none. She just, mm -mm. she lean her head down. That bob say shift. Head back, shift. Baby, she shake her head. That bob say, let's just stay right here, right here, right here, right here. <laughs> She's giving y'all perfection baby professional elegance darling she looked gorgeous monique is always beautiful 
beautiful set of teeth, beautiful skin tone. Just, I mean, she is just a pretty, pretty girl. A pretty, pretty girl. Um, I would say that Karen is my next favorite style wise i saw them uh, all of the ladies standing up so i know what the you know what they look like standing up in the photos that was released a long time ago i would say my worst dress was gonna be wendy ocepho but you know when people that it's their first reunion they always overdo it y'all remember how candace was dressed her first uh eva y'all remember how eva was dressed eva was <laughs> eva say more layers more layers we need more layers right and cowboy boots. <laughs> well, Wendy Osefo said, like, give me one sleeve, give me one shoulder, give me ruffle, 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 give me volume, 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 volume. Give me an old school glam hairstyle, but I want you to make my makeup as splotchy and out of tone and uncohesive as possible. And if you could spray paint my eyeshadow on, and also make it dark, dark, dark. I want my concealer to be dark, dark, dark. <laughs> I want my contour to be light, okay? <laughs> I want my foundation to be mid-darkish, rangish. Like, I, that makeup was trash. And it, it was like, the more she went on, I don't know if her skin is oily, like the more the, ep, the show went on, it just started getting like oily and dark and draggy and thick and heavy. And I was just like, oh, sure. you transforming right before our eyes. It was not pretty. It was not pretty. I don't understand why that makeup was done like that. Why wasn't it a little brighter, a little lighter, a little, just, uh, just a little bit more polished. It, everything was just so dark. Um, and then, you know, I'm torn a little bit between Candace, um, being worse dressed and Robin, uh, Candace, that dress, I don't know that big bow in the front, like, it was just, it it was just a no for me. Her makeup was pretty and her hair was cute. It seems like that ponytail was done really, really well. But that dress was kind of mod, um, pixie. You know, it just it 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 had no va va voom. It had no zhuzh. It had no 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 um glamour you know and then she brought this fan out this feathery fan i was like let your dress be the extra let your let your except i you look like something but you got a like this is so typical i i just think it's a, it's typical that she would need accoutrements because your dress was giving us you know uh, eh, right and robin oh my child robin was giving us maleficent by the face that that makeup was so so harsh it was so harsh it was so dark in that hair you know it, it must be that now he asked her why he was expecting her to wear embellish you know her headline i was like no she is well wearing embezzle her wig line and this wig is <laughs> from the painted treads collection. You know where they they run over it with car tires and then spray paint them. <laughs> a different color spray paint. She was wearing gold. She was wearing it from the painted treads collection. She was wearing gold. Mhm. Mm em embezzled wigs. Yeah, that's what it was. That wig was like a helmet. It was like a hat on her head. Like it was so stiff. And then you turn to Andy, the bend of the wig, you know, the part that falls over of the, of the, you know, the bob is blocking your face from the camera. So when you look at Andy, when the, when the camera look on you, we are only getting one eye and this dark ass lip and he's, you know, then when you turn, it's like, Ooh, girl, you stern in the face. You giving us strong makeup. Like, are you angry? Your makeup say you're mad. Your makeup say you do evil. <laughs> ah, 
You and that Giselle standing around a cauldron like bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, darling. Toil and trouble. Oh, he was giving us witchy poo vibe. Evil witchy poo vibe. I didn't like that fabric on that dress. The way it was pulled across like that. It looked like she well, looked like an undergarment. It looked more like an undergarment in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, like the material or something. It was it, the way it was stretching across there, and it seemed like it had a little, a little texture here under the breastplate. But it, that, it, that's what it looked like. It looked like a breastplate. Like a that's what it looked like. Like an old Greek warrior breastplate or something. Everything was just so harsh on Robin. She was so, it was so harsh and hard. The lines were hard that hell, you know, Monique's hair was giving us movement, just move, little professional movement. But, but, um, Robin's hair was like a helmet. It was ugly. Now I do like that 99 J. I do like that 99 J that Ashley had in her head. I'm not going to call Ashley the worst dress because Ashley always wear a costume. Y'all know we talked about that in the in the season finale episode when she wore that ice skater outfit around there to Robin and Warren's uh, annual Christmas party, girl. But today she was giving us a 99 J old burgundy uh, uh, hair color, child. I said, you better come through 99 J. But that costume, it was so ill-fitting. She must have got the dress before she realized she was pregnant or something. Why would you wear that? And you got your vagina. Vagina. Your vagina was right there. Like, girl. It, it was that split was so open and ill-fitting. Like if she had had a malodorous issue coming from underneath it, you had no choice but to smell it. She wasn't gonna be able to drape that smell because she didn't have enough draping. Okay, so that is my um that is my you know best and worst dress. It's gotta be Wendy and Candace. I and and Robin, I don't know, and Ashley, but that's that's neither here nor there. And surprisingly, Giselle was okay. Her hair was okay. And her uh dress was okay. Like it wasn't as horrible as it has been in the past. I mean, normally she would have threw in a threw a old uh glittery fishnet stocking on with it. <laughs> Yeah, mm -mm. but she was all right. So, um, let's see here. Ashley is six months pregnant. Um, again, she was wearing another costume. They started out with Karen in her wig. She was wearing Victoria straight. Now, it was pretty, real simple, real nice. I, I like the density of the wig. I think sometimes when a wig is too thick, it looks wiggy. Um, the density of that wig to me made it look a little bit more natural. It was more appropriate for the style that she was wearing it in. So that was cute. Um, listen, the energy in the room when they was loading in and sitting down, it was palpable. It was palpable. Um, all the ladies came in, Monique came in last. And when all the ladies was in there and they was like, chuckle, 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 key, key, key. <laughs> And Monique walked in, they was like, oh, <clears throat> uh, um, mm -hmm. they won't get her no joy. That's right, baby, because she came in, baby. Her dress was applauding, okay? That hair was applauding. That beat on her face was applauding. She don't need y'all. She do not need y'all to toot, toot no horns for her. She don't. She came sharp. And when Chris come out, Chris going to be sharp as hell, too. Okay, that's why y'all mad. A house be clean. <laughs> she always got a new ride. And the bitch be sure. Polished. Finished. That's why y'all hate them. That's why y'all hate them. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. This ain't the Monique show. <laughs> Yet. Okay, so... Karen's wigs, they talk about Monique and T'Challa, which, you know, she just lights up when she talks about T'Challa. Um, Robin in that embezzled wig. Um, Giselle and Jamal, they talked about that. And Giselle was like, oh, well, he's in Georgia. And, you know, Georgia is a, is, is a hot spot right now. Everywhere's a hot spot. Everywhere's a hot spot. What you're not going to do is try be trying to drag Georgia in comparison to what? Right. Every other state in the union. Zip it. So, um, they talk about Wendy and her degrees, you know, he going around the room, uh, Candace and, and her fan 
you know, I mean, really what else is there? You know, she moving into a new house. She kind of alluded to that and everything. We already know about that. Um, oh, Wendy was so uneven tone. Like I just, it was just so horrible to me. Every time you looked at it, it's like her face was sh shape shifting or something. Like the way the light was hitting it. She almost looked like her face was dented. It was, it was. Uh, Karen is starting the night off being who she is, which is kind of faux, kind of fake, kind of phony. And pe some people call it being, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, she was being, you know, very, very, very PC and that type of thing. But it was fake and phony. Like, she came to drag. She came to drag. She just wasn't letting all them little darts, little bitty darts that, that Giselle was throwing out hit her. She was like, ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. And because when it came to coming to dragon, she was like, no, nah, I'm finna save it. I'm not finna be out the gate with this thing right here, right? Uh, I like the way she paced herself, and as well as Monique. Monique kept it in the role. Candace kept saying little stuff, and she was looking right at Monique and, and addressing her. For instance, Andy said, who do you think is the best dress amongst the ladies? And to Monique, and Monique said, Karen, because she just has a way about her that lights up the room amongst all these ladies. And um, Karen was like, aw, thank you very much. And uh, of course, oh, Miss Andy. Miss Andy said, I thought you were gonna say you. Right, because she is, basically. <laughs> um, and she said, no, I'm not that vain. And uh, Candace going to say not on camera. Monique act like she didn't even hear her. She act like she didn't even hear her. I was like, see, now that's why you got dragged. Why are you addressing her? Y'all got beef. Why are you addressing her? You traumatized. Why do you keep addressing her? You stressed out, you know, to the point of sticky noting all over your house. Why are you addressing her? Why? Somebody need to write on a sticky note, close your dad burn mouth, and stick it right there in front of her, okay? Read your sticky note. Read your sticky note, okay? Read your sticky note before you get dragged. You do your sticky therapy before you get dragged, okay? <coughs> I just didn't understand why she kept addressing Monique. Why do you keep addressing her? Y'all not supposed to be talking. Y'all got beef. Y'all not friends. Why is you doing that? So, like I said, um, they started talking about uh, Giselle's fashions and uh, Karen coming for the Green Eyed Bandits um, on, on the show. Like I said, Karen kept it steady. And, and fake and faux and fugazi. Like she wasn't giving them no no extra to go on. Nothing to feed off of. They talked about Wendy and her degrees. And Karen not wanting her on the show. Giselle couldn't wait to tell it. I was like, Giselle. See, Sharice got you thinking that you, um, you got some real tea. Okay? But you ain't got no real tea. The real tea is over there in that binder, boo. <laughs> Karen didn't even want her on the show. Now, you want Karen and Wendy to argue back and forth after you done started it, which is what you've done this entire season. You go ahead and keep the party going, and the ladies fight amongst each other, right? And you stand back, like Karen said about you and Robin with glee in your eyes. And, uh... Karen, you know, Wendy was like, I can believe it because yada. And Karen was like, you know what? I had my challenges with you. And that is because yada, yada, yada. And fakey, fakey, fakey. And woo da woo da woo. I'm not arguing with you. I didn't come to drag you. I came to semi-drag you, but not 100% drag you, darling. Go, 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 go sit over there, darling. Go sit, go sit, go sit over there. Okay? And it just shut Wendy down. Once again, once again. They talked about that little walk that she did to Wendy, that Slytherin walk. And all of a sudden, Wendy was like, I thought it was funny, girl. Goodbye. They talked about um, how Giselle brought the information back to to uh, Wendy and it wasn't completely accurate. She wasn't calling her a floozy flip-flopper uh, or whatever that was. You know, so Andy kind of called that out a little bit. Um, Wendy and those degrees, and then they got on this conversation about, um, Ashley was saying that Wendy was using her degrees kind of like a weapon, 
um, and making it seem like she was superior. You know, she was using it to belittle and put others down. And we know she started with, with, with Ashley out the gate, basically. And it led to this conversation about Wendy being called aggressive because Ashley said she felt like it was a bit aggressive. I've used it in my own, um, commentary about this season, that I felt like Wendy was coming off in an aggressive way. And so Andy was saying, well, how do you ladies feel? Do you guys feel like it's a bit of colorism because the ladies, when the ladies call you and Candace aggressive? Well, Monique and Candace just about the same color almost. Right? So I just, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand why he was addressing it to Candace and Wendy and, you know, Monique had an actual act of aggression and it wasn't addressed to her per se. You know what I'm saying? He didn't include her in this, right? So that's fine, whatever. Um, And Wendy was like, and she was looking at Robin and Robin said, why are you looking at me? She said, no, I'm looking at all the ladies to hear what you have to say. Don't make this a moment. Don't make this a moment. Here is the thing. Here is the thing. When someone says a person is aggressive, Okay, for me, it don't have nothing to do with color. It don't have nothing to do with color. It has to do with tone. It has to do with gestures. It has to do with the volume of your voice. It has to do with your body language. You know what I'm saying? If you giving me this, you giving me this right here. If you, if you gathering me and you talking all loud and your voice is raised and your tone is kind of razor sharp and snippy and snappy and popping off, if... You won't let me finish what I have to say, even though you just asked me a question. All of that feeds into my perception of you as an aggressive person. It don't have nothing to do with your skin color. Because if a white person walked up and, and was and was pointing at me and saying, You get your and I don't and you the you the you the you the and why and y'all and loud and I'll be like, Oh, they was very aggressive. It was I was felt I felt threatened. Like, I didn't know what was going on. Like, I don't understand why she was walking up to me. You can walk aggressively towards somebody and make them feel type, a type of way. I'm telling you, it's people that walk hard through their house, and I feel like they are aggressive walkers. My girl, I got a good girlfriend that, that she ain't but like four foot nothing. And, baby, when I tell you, she stomped through. She stomped through. It is aggressive as hell. Okay, it was it was a it could have been a really great conversation that kind of unfolded. First of all, it was the wrong place to have the conversation because we here for the tea. But on top of that, um, none of these ladies are in a place where they can contemplate and have intelligent conversation. Like I said, there is a tension in this room that is palpable, and even with Wendy and Robin, that was aggressive. The fact that no one can finish what they're saying without you cutting them off is aggressive. The fact that you're using your hands and your degrees and you're, you're, you know, you're talking down. The fact that you stood up at the table. Remember when you said that uh, uh, somebody like you calls me Dr. Wendy. That's why I don't mess with people like you. And you stood up and, and then sat down. That's aggressive. That's aggressive. When Candace gets to talking and biting and nipping at people and, 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 and being hurtful, that's aggressive. That is aggressive. It doesn't matter if she talks in a normal, even tone. If her words hurt, it is aggression. It is aggression. Okay. And although it is used a lot for African Americans when they feel passionately about something, okay, it is used a lot. But at the same time, it is not synonymous with them. And that is the only point that Wendy could possibly ever have. It's not synonymous with us as black women. But we do talk aggressively. And so do Asian women. And so do Indian women. And Middle Eastern women. And, 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 and you know what I'm saying? Like, it, uh, uh, it, it's... And uh, Monique was like, well... I, she doesn't, you know, she kind of had my same stance in that, you know, it, we, she doesn't really think it has, in this situation, has anything to do with color per se, but just, just your tone and how you're talking. Like, and then, uh, uh, Candace going to say something about hood rat or hoodlum or something like that. 
and ghetto. And uh, Monique was like, okay, so aggression is out, but because they were like, use a different word. Aggression is out, but hood red and hoodlum and ghetto is okay. Noted, noted. <laughs> I was like, touche, touche. And Robbie gonna jump in and say, words hurt and words matter. And words are so impactful. Well, where was all of this when you had all that glee in your eyes? When Candace, with that butter knife, was coming after uh, coming after Monique, huh? Where was all this energy about words and how you act and all of this, that, and the third when she was going after, after Ashley online? Where was all of this? Where words, words, I mean, it's not that she should have chastised just Candace with, with regards to Ashley, but she should have chastised both of them because they both were being ugly to each other. It's just that long after Ashley stopped, uh, Candace kept going. You calling somebody a roach? I'd rather be called aggressive than a roach as a black woman. I'm just going to be honest. I'm just being honest. Okay? Um, and winch. All of this stuff, child. Child. <laughs> oh, it was, and then when they, you know, Wendy was like, it doesn't matter. There's a plethora of words you can, you can use instead. And when Andy said, what's another word? And she couldn't think of it. Shut up, Wendy. Shut up. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you're so smart, you're stupid. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes you're so smart, you're stupid. Really. You want to initiate this conversation in an aggressive manner, in my opinion. You want to take it over and command it and, 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 and you know, make it seem like, you know, you're leading this, this, this great charge of this great conversation. And you can't even think of other words that could be used. Passionate. Passionate is a good word that can be used. But you said a plethora, a plethora, a plethora of things. <laughs> Hush. Be quiet, Wendy. Um, <coughs> once again, Candace addressing Monique. Stop doing that, girl. Where you sticking though? And then we see where Candace and Ashley have a lot of back and forth uh, about um the song that she sung and, and how it compares. Candace's song compares to Ashley's song. I don't even remember Ashley's song. And their voices, and uh, Ashley said, you know, Candace, uh, tr Candace said Ashley's voice is trash. Um, she said her husband is itching, and it was. I was like, this, this is the shit that gets you windmill. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's a good thing they was all so far apart because this is the stuff that that was aggressive. That's aggressive. That's aggressive conversation to come at her. How is she supposed to take? What you're saying to her as anything other than aggression when you say it like this, sis. That's all. That's all. I, and I feel like um, Candace as well as um, Giselle was kind of, they kind of jumped the gun a little bit in terms of the race. I think uh Karen and Monique held it held it in the road and um you know idled back a little bit and let them throw their best shots out there and watch them fall and then um then Monique and Karen said okay okay <laughs> put my first regiment in <laughs> let me get my binder <laughs> But we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so um let's see. Uh Monique, they went on a little bit of a break. And uh all the ladies had to sit there unless you had to go to the bathroom. Monique was leaned over talking to Ashley. She had her mic on. I was like, the other ladies can't hear her because they she seemed so loud to me, but I guess it's because the microphone was on. And she was talking about, Candace, did you hear what she had to say? And then we hear Ashley say, do you guys think that you guys will ever be friends again? And um, Monique was like, no, I don't think so. I was like, Monique, stop talking to Ashley. She's not your friend. She's not your friend, sis. She's not your friend. <laughs> She's not your friend. Now, I don't know how they're going to make it work with you all still filming because Monique will still be filming. 
Okay, next next season. I don't know how it's going to work considering you and Candace don't talk to each other at all. I don't know how much you and Giselle going to talk to each other. But y'all got this whole hiatus to figure all of that out. Because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised Giselle didn't run <laughs> and, and try to wrestle that binder away from uh, Monique, baby. Because Monique cut her low. So... They come back, child, and they bring up Giselle and Jamal. And, um, you know, she was saying that, this was when she was saying that, um, you know, COVID is real. Well, he brought up the fact that her dad and her kids wasn't really feeling Jamal. And Giselle, everything is COVID. The house not finished because of COVID, right? Uh, every Hugh Beauty is not is not uh the manufacturer the person that makes it is is uh uh it can't manufacture it because of covid right and karen chimed in and karen said ever hue beauty, beauty is no more i'm told that target liquidated all that they had left it is not the website is not up it is not a viable company anymore um whatever you beauty is no more and you had all of this conversation about la Dom, darling and you don't even have your business anymore you don't even have anything you don't even want to discuss anything about your business anymore and 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 giselle was stunned giselle was stunned girl you had to know you had to know all low these many years, you all have given her, her a false sense of importance because she wasn't even prepared. You had to know that somebody was going to bring it up. But you probably think to yourself, I'm smarter than the average bear. These ladies have nothing on me. I'm both quick witted and, 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 and sharp with it. And I know how to shut these ladies down. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go out there and, and, and start shooting right away. Ta, 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 right? But Karen said, oh no, what about Everhue Beauty? <laughs> and then, um, when your daddy and your children don't like Jamal, they came across on the show like they don't like Jamal. And she said, well, because of the way that the kids were acting, it, it actually helped us because it helped facilitate this conversation between the children and Jamal. And I don't know, I wasn't privy to all of those conversations. I was like, what? What? Giselle, you, you bull skidding. You bull skidding. You are bull skidding. I mean, spinning it. Just flat out lying. Just flat out lying. Dumb girls do not like that man. Now, he, he they daddy. Now, I think they have a measure of respect for that. But I don't think they like him as a human. I don't think they like him character-wise, especially that Grace. And them twins, you know what I'm saying? A twin is, is, is a best friend that you can go and talk to about anything. You best cool believe in the still of the night in their bedroom. They be like, did you read? I read something about daddy having a new baby. Is there any pictures out there? You know they talking about it. But she tried to make it seem like Jamal worked it out with the girls. And that's going to be the end of that conversation. And she says, my dad is always going to be for me. Of course, he was exaggerating a little bit. Girl, your daddy thought he was, un forgot he was Mike, girl. He was out there talking to a random stranger, giving it to him. <laughs> All of the tea, darling. Six or seven children. Apparently, your daddy knew about the last baby before the rest of us did, huh? Before the blogs did, huh? Your daddy might be the reason why they got out there and started looking, right? And so, uh, child, here, here we go. Here we go, child. <laughs> Let me get my binder. Let me get my binder, children. So, so, um, <laughs> so, Giselle's going to sweep on past it, you know, and, and, um, you know, she, she's just going to move on past it's supposed to be this fake relationship. Karen, Karen brings her up to bat, right? And, and, uh, uh, Karen, Karen just, just grazes her lightly. And they, the people, the street is saying that he got six or seven babies in and that this relationship isn't real, that y'all just, he just did it to help you save your job here on the show. Cause you really don't have a storyline at all. Um, and we just want to know. It's none of my business, but I want to know uh, if you and Jamal are together. And Giselle was like, uh, yes. That pause, that pause was everything. And so, um, 
uh, Karen went on a little bit more, baby. She tagged a little bit more. Doom, doom, doom. And so then she said, you know what, Monique? Go on, take it from here, girl. She tagged Monique, and Monique said, well, let me get the binder, darling. <laughs> let me get my paperwork. <laughs> and she said, okay, I'm going to flip through these tabs. Let's go to the Giselle and Jamal Bullskit tab here. Mm-hmm. And she says, oh, I've got to pull out. She to pull them, pull them rings, pop, pop them rings and took out what she needed to pop them rings back together, baby. And she said, let's bring this, let's bring this paperwork forward here. Okay, let's bring this paperwork forward here, uh-huh. And she says, oh, let's see here. Let, baby, she had a stack, huh? And she peeled through them stacks, them papers, them stacks, huh? She peeled through, <laughs> And she said, I've got screenshots here, darling. Screenshots here. <coughs> and, and she pictures of him in the bed with her. Pictures of her, him out. These texts right here. And so Andy said, well, how do you know? Now, meanwhile, all the ladies are looking at Giselle like, Candace, Wendy, Robin, her whole alliance. Everybody's looking at her like, Girl, what is she about to say? Right? <clears throat> Listen, Candace and Robin kept chiming in, child, and trying to cut Monique off and trying to get Monique to distract Monique from, from reading off all them receipts and them facts. But Monique kept flipping and kept talking very calm, very calm. She was like, yeah, there's pictures of him in uh, her bed here as well as... Um, text messages uh-huh and uh, y'all don't hear me though uh-huh and say he been calling her uh-huh and say when she confronted him mm -hmm, and said do you love me or no uh -huh. what's going on with you and Giselle trying to be your family uh-huh and Candace was like, this sounds like rumors to me doesn't it sound like rumors to you and and she said, no, no, no. <laughs> they say here huh, in the text messages, <laughs> he said, uh, it's just for the show. <laughs> Y'all don't like this kind of teaching. <laughs> it's all a fraud. It's a, a fugazi, if you will. <laughs> and then Robin chimed in and Robin said, what's your whole motivation? First of all, she sounded like a linebacker. That old deep voice wafting from around that helmet hair what why you what what is your motivation to doing all of this right they don't show her face we just hear that growl roll through and and monique said oh yes huh, huh. let me press on here and then andy said how do you know that these text messages aren't fake and she said well there's a phone number right next to his name but don't ask me huh ask his girlfriend is the number 410 blah 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 69 i'm hoish as hell oh yes and and Giselle huh, sat there stunned, and Andy said, Giselle, huh, does that sound like his number? And Giselle said, uh, yeah, I believe it sounds, um, familiar, or, and she just stunned. And Monique says, before you come for me, you and Pastor Holy Whore, <laughs> with your fake storyline, before you drag me and mine, before you drag my children and my husband and call him all out his name, check the receipts, check the paperwork, darling, sweep around your own front door, before you try to sweep around mine. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh, you want to hear some good preaching, huh? You want to hear me read from my scriptorial book, huh? I got it right here, huh? You want me to turn huh, to the Candace chapter, huh? But we're going to do that next week. Huh? There's also, oh yes, a Robin chapter as well. Huh? I have no problem reading text line by line on you hoes. Huh? Don't come for me huh? and I won't come for you. Huh? If I don't shake your chain, don't neither one of you bark. I was like, you better do it. 
You better do it, do it, do it. Do it till you're satisfied, Monique. Huh? Huh? Do it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> she said, turn with me in your books. Oh, but she the only one with a book, baby. She the only one in the book with a book. Candace coming here with these recycled reads. But for the show, they show her watching the show, refreshing herself. She had her 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 reads ready to go. They canned reads, baby. But she but 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 Monique in that binder, she's got your tea. And she taking your tea and painting you all up and down the side with it, boom. Giselle coming into my cell. The Geritol is kicked in. How long you been saving that? How long you been saving this Geritol whole situation? And and Karen said age. She meant to say ageism, but she said it wrong. And Wendy corrected her. I was like, Wendy, I believe she got a tab in there for you too. So you might want to hold your horses, boo. You might want to hold your horses, boo. Ain't your people curse, huh? Ain't your people running around here curse, girl, huh? Hmm? It ain't right, but it's it was what the people is saying. Hmm? Ain't you got credit issues? Ain't you renting that house you live in? You best to hush. You best to hush with your uneven skin tone. But that's all I got to say, you guys. That is the show. What did y'all think? Who was your best dress? Whose hair did you like? Listen, listen. These girls came to give us nothing but nothing but tea reads tea shade the whole nine but monique monique say take this truth and choke on it that's all i have for you guys tell me what you think put it down below and until next time honeybees mwah, mwah, mwah. Ah, holla.